Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation, and for today's video, we're going to be going over the new Prime Halloween Sora 7-star deal that we currently have uh, within the game. Now, I know this caught a lot of people off guard. It caught me off guard, too, by the fact it was a completely different metal than what we were expecting. Most people were expecting the... Uh, jack and zero metal that jp got but as i kind of guessed um we basically did <laughs> get jack and zero metal it's just called differently it's it's different artwork called differently but the same metal which does kind of raise some questions as to maybe there actually is some type of issue why global can't have a Nightmare Before Christmas type medals anymore for some reason. I'm not going to give any uh, re any theories as to why this might be the case because I don't want any false rumors or speculations going around like there were last time. But it does raise questions. It is a little bit of a, uh, as, as you, I guess you could say, a bit of evidence that, yeah, there is something going on. What it is, I have no idea, but there is something going on. But anyways, let's get right into the actual video. Uh, we'll start off by going over what exactly does the metal do in the first place. This is what the metal looks like. It's pretty cool, to be honest. It's not that bad. Uh, and at the seven star version, it's a magic upright metal tier five. AOE costs four gauges and has a seven star multiplier of a 25.05. It deals 11 hits that ignores target's attributes. And for one turn, it raises your upright strength by three tiers and gives a plus 120% guilt boost. Now, whether or not you think it's actually worth pulling from this metal, uh, let's start off by saying this. The banner itself is pretty good. It's pretty much similar to like other banners we've had in the past. You're guaranteed a tier six or higher seven star metal that comes with a random skill as well, uh, along with a guaranteed six star copy of the Prime Halloween Sora medal along with three magic mirrors. That alone is already pretty good on its own. Now, whether or not the medal itself is actually worth pulling for, overall, for pretty much the most part, for most people, it's um, it's a hard no, okay? Uh, the multiplier is not that great, even at seven star. Uh, it's actually only just slightly stronger than a Key Art 13, which was previously a really old VIP medal in the past. For most people, this is just not worth doing. The multiplier isn't a high. The ability isn't really that great. Sure, it has a 120% uh, guilt buff, but like that's not that great uh, because of the fact that you're going to want to put it in the beginning of the Keyblade to take advantage of that. But because of the fact that the multiplier is so low, uh, if you remember the same thing that happened with my with the Prime Mr. Incredible that came out, it's going to suffer the same thing where because its multiplier is so low, the damage that you're going to be gaining from the 120% boost isn't really going to give you too much because of the fact that it's already lacking so much damage on its own. Now, if it actually had a high multiplier and it gave the 120% guilt boost, then yeah, this would actually be a pretty decent metal. But because it doesn't, it's really not benefiting nearly as much as you might think it would be. Now, the one thing I do have to say that is positive about this metal, though, is that for any of you Lux Raiders out there who do enjoy farming uh, raid bosses for Lux, uh, this is one of those metals that is absolutely fantastic for raiding, uh, especially if you're a beginner player. Uh, if you're a beginner player and you don't already have like a decent raid boss set up already within the game, then I would definitely recommend at least getting your copy of this metal. Maybe even worth 7 starring it, trying to get multiple copies of it for traits and such. Uh, and I say this primarily because of the fact that um, out of all types of metals in the game, the best metals in the game in terms of raid boss setups uh, for ease of use, I should say. They're not necessarily the best setups for raid bosses, but they are by, by far the easiest to put together and most useful for raid bosses. Are going to be metals that ignore attributes, okay? All metals that ignore attributes are the easiest metals to use for raid bosses, and this is primarily because of the fact that you don't have to spend nearly as much time or effort 
trying to put together like three or four different Keyblade setups to match the raid bot's attribute for raiding, okay? So let me go ahead and show you guys an example of what I mean like in my own game, okay? So for example, there are three types of attributes within the game, speed, power, and magic, okay? So normally, if you want decent raid boss setups to fight against these respective attributes and stuff, you want three different setups to do that. So you might have one, for example, on the counterpoint. Uh, I usually have my third Keyblade setup on each Keyblade as my luck setup. I might have one magic setup on my counterpoint for that. I might have one on my Fenrir against speed. And then against, what is it? And then against magic, I might have one on my Sleeping Lion, for example. Now I can tell you right now, most people are not gonna already have tons of metals that already have like raid traits and stuff on them um, in order to be able to nearly have the type of raid setups, multiple raid setups like I do, okay? That's just not how it's gonna be for most people, especially for casual players, let alone beginners. Um, and this is where Prime Halloween Sora comes in. Uh, because you can actually do something, and this is actually something that I used to do when I was kind of like an intermediate player. You can actually, and I can actually put it together for you guys to see right here. Um, but you can actually put together a setup within the game where you can literally only use one Keyblade as your raiding Keyblade, period. And it will always be super effective because you're filling it up with just metals that are super effective against the raid boss that you're fighting, okay? So let me show you an example. If we clear this, um, if for those of you that might remember, there's a really old VIP middle that we had in the past called, let me see if I can find it, uh, called the King, Donald, and Goofy, okay? It's a single target metal and it ignores attributes, all right? Um, I used to use this all the time for raiding uh, just because of the fact that it made it so much easier just to use one Keyblade for raid bosses compared to trying to create three different Keyblades uh, for raiding. It's very hard. Making raid boss setups for farming takes a lot of time uh, to put together. It's not something you can just whoop together uh, right away. But with these type of metals, you can do that. Um, so what I would do is like I would have the King Don and Goofy, let's say on Fairy Size for example. I would have the King Don and Goofy right here. And then, you know how the same logic applies where uh, having Lux attack set uh, skills on your copy metals is the best thing you want to do for your copy metals just because of the fact that one, copy metals are the most versatile metals in the entire game. So uh, not only can you use them for attack, but you can still use them for Lux setups as well. This is one of those situations where I can put HD Shion uh, right here, for example, where it's using luck, so I can use it. I have a luck skill on it, so I can use it for my luck setups. And because the fact it's copying my the King Don and Goofy, it will always be super effective against whatever it is I'm fighting. Um, the same thing applies to the the Prime Halloween Sora. Now, if you remember earlier, I did state that it's basically just a slightly stronger version of my key art number thirteen. All right. Um, so just pretend my key art number 13 is Prime Halloween Sora because they're literally like the same exact metal. Uh, you can just put it right there and then I would have another copy metal copying it like right there. And then I would have a metal, maybe like a Kyrie metal in my first slot. Let's go ahead and grab that. Boom. Okay. This right here, I already have a luck setup that will work against any type of raid boss and I only have it on one Keyblade. I don't have to worry about having three different Keyblade setups for raiding because that's very difficult for most people to put together unless you've already put in a ton of time playing into the game like I have, okay? Um, like, I meant, like I said before, putting together raid boss setups for multiple Keyblades takes a lot of time, let alone a single Keyblade in yourself, okay? Uh, so when it comes to Prime Halloween Sora, if you are a Lux Raider and you don't have that many great raid boss setups just yet for, then I then this is a metal that you can definitely go after to try and chase for for your raid boss setups. And of course, the primary trait they're going to want to chase after for those setups is going to be the raid boss trait. You want hardcore as many raid boss traits as possible 
maybe extra attack. I don't recommend extra attack for raid, raid setups, although you can use them. Uh, but most definitely you want the raid boss trait. And then you can slap a luck skill on that and boom, you can be set for quite a very long time. Uh, other medals similar to this that fit the same category are old medals like HD King Mickey EX, for example. Uh, Kira 13, like I mentioned before as well. King Donald and Goofy. Any of these medals that ignore attributes are the perfect candidates for raid boss setups. But aside from raid boss farming, if you're not particularly interested in that, uh, or you already have good setups um, or medals for raid bosses, then you don't have to worry about this medal at all whatsoever. Now after explaining that a little bit, let's go ahead and talk about whether or not it's actually worth pulling for uh, between the banner or the actual avatar board that we got to go alongside with it. Now this is the first time that I believe, at least from my memory, where we've had something like this, where we could actually have a like banner for the metal compared to just, I mean like an avatar board for the metal compared to just the banner itself. Um, now in terms of jewels, obviously if you're looking to try and seven star this metal, like and your, your goal, your primary goal is just to get this metal. Okay, you could care less about anything else. Quite obviously getting the avatar board is gonna save you a whole lot of jewels of course, okay. Um, getting a seven star version of the metal just from the banner alone is going to cost you 1500 jewels, of course, okay. Whereas the avatar board is 8000, so you're literally saving 7000 jewels doing that. Uh, on top of the fact that this not only comes with the seven star, let's look at the details so you guys can see this. Not only does it come with the seven star version of the metal, where does it say it? There it is. Not only does it come along with the seven star version of the metal, but also comes with three copies of the six star version, which you can basically roll for traits. Uh, but it comes along with the attack boost six max skill, which is nice. Okay. Now I know it shows a bunch of these extra stuff right here, pretty much for the most part for the value that you're chasing after only these three are, are of any actual significant value. Everything else is pretty much kind of trash, uh, between the banner and this. If you were to seven star the metal, you would be getting 15 magic mirrors just from the banner alone uh, compared to just the two that here. So this is kind of trash right there. SIDs are trash. You, you can get SIDs very easily every day from the daily SID banner or uh, quest. Okay. Here we're doing Louis and Chips and Dales. Chips and Dales might have a little bit of value, but they're not big enough of value that it warrants getting an entire avatar board for this. Okay. It's, pri it's quite literally just these three things right here that are, are any significant value. Now, on the flip side, like I mentioned before, yes, this does cost less jewels, um, and you're, you are getting a kind of decent amount of benefit from it, okay? Uh, you have three chances to roll some good traits, uh, on top of you getting a attack boost six max skill. However, the banner, of course, does come with a seven star version of a guaranteed tier six or higher medal with a new skill along with it. And one of those options is attack boost six max anyway. So the only benefit of getting attack boost six max from the avatar board compared to getting it from the banner is that you can actually choose what medal to put attack boost six max on compared to uh, randomly getting it in a medal. But in that case, you can just argue that you can just uh, cannibalize the metal that you get attack boost six max from from the banner and just put it on whatever metal anyways. You don't have to necessarily get it all alone from the avatar board. So in terms of raw value, the banner has more value, but does cost more jewels to get the seven star version of Prime Halloween Sora. Uh, but if you just care about getting like seven star Sora for all that matter and you weren't thinking about doing beyond maybe two or three pulls anyways then in that case it wouldn't hurt doing the avatar board and just to restate it as well no you don't actually need this metal or for players who don't have good raid boss setups just yet this would be a good metal uh, to use for that purpose but other than that, that's it for today, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below about this metal and the banner and all that good stuff in general. Uh, but other than that, if you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It is the best way I know I want to upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.